What's up, YouTube? Capital G here. Got a nice little uh, YGO Pro replay. Got to catch up on these. People are sending me so many awesome replays. So you guys will probably be seeing at least one of these a day, maybe even two of these a day. But anyways, this is Volcanic Paleozoic versus, um, I guess you could call this Cleefort's like Cleefort Metaphos, it doesn't run that many Cleefort cards, but you might start seeing this pop up, the uh, this version of Metaphos, because we all know that pretty much anything in Metaphos kind of work, especially if that other thing is like a Pendulum deck, and uh, with Cleefort, you can actually make Cyber Dragon Infinity fairly easily because of like Scout and Monolith, so, you know, it actually has a little bit of natural synergy, and what's cool about this build of the, uh, the Paleozoic is, you know, it's actually very resistant to things like Twin Twister, because when you're running like the volcanic engine and you're running things like reload uh now all of a sudden if you end up getting hit with like a twin twister okay you end up hitting one of my one of my paleozoic cards you end up hitting like a reload and it's not that big of a deal because we know that the paleozoics can summon themselves back from the graveyard and obviously i can just banish a copy of you know my um i can just banish a copy of my reload and get a shell to my hand or something like that so i end up not really losing anything and you kind of twin twistered and didn't really get anywhere so this uh these two archetypes actually have a lot of natural synergy this is going to be a crazy replay because you guys are going to see some chain links that are fucking nuts you also see a whole bunch of lockdown negation on the field people have probably seen this deck you may have seen the volcanic paleozoic i know that um grand shovel dungo i think i think he displayed it on his channel so if you guys are, i might even have a, a, a link to that uh video that he had but anyways there's a couple of things if you don't really know much about paleozoic to just kind of remember some of these guys effects uh this guy is basically mst this guy is karma cut this guy is destiny draw and then of course obviously paleozoics can come back from the graveyard and they're unaffected by monster effects but then when they leave the field if they were summoned that way then they get banished so you basically have to make sure that you exceed with them and if you exceed with them they pretty much like you can just use them over and over and over again all right so we got that turn one scout that's how you get monolith a lot of times you'll use one of your metaphors cards you'll blow the scout up and then you'll set up a full scale and then you'll pendulum summon you'll go for cyber dragon infinity so typical paleozoic fashion you just set a whole bunch of backer that's paleozoic is not a very offensive deck for like the first couple of turns so he tries to mst that metaphors counter is chained and uh, you see a whole bunch of draws here because he activated his uh, destiny draw. So he summons his destiny draw back from the uh, graveyard. Then he activates his karma cut, obviously looking to get rid of uh, the metaphos fusion there. And looks like he wants to pendulum summon scout. This is a decent play. Pendulum summoning scout is actually pretty decent. You didn't really see Cleef Fort do it that much because they wanted to use scout to search multiple times. But against a deck like Paleozoic that doesn't really have that many big beaters, you can just use a scout. It can sit here on the field. It can just kind of stall. You know what I mean? Because right here, the Paleozoic player could go in the Tree Toad. But, I mean, come on. Tree Toad ain't getting over no damn scout. You will basically just have a little bit of a stalemate at that point. But he does have access to, like, Reload because he has the Rocket in his hand. And he has Shell. And he has Volcanic Counter. Volcanic Counter is actually pretty good in this deck because it just does a lot. Like, it can do a huge amount of burn damage. So, you see he summons more cards after using his Destiny Draw, and he has tra Chain Strike. Chain Strike is absolutely nuts in Paleozoic because of how many, because of, like, how quickly you can build Chain Links, and uh, you definitely will see that in this tool. All right, so he activates uh, a copy of Summoner's Art, and you just see more Chaining. He's attempting to get rid of the uh, Vault Flame, and you see he summons a bunch of cards back. So right now, it's kind of difficult for Metaphos over here to just establish a board because every time he tries to play anything, his cards are like getting blown up. But he does finally get his full scale, and a full scale is very important. He's able to bust out Cyber Dragon Infinity. He's able to absorb the Volcanic Rocket. He then used Metaphos uh, Fusion to summon this guy right here um Mithril. and then i believe he put the metaphos fusion back in his deck to draw a card and he ends up drawing uh dupe frog which is important because uh actually no 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 not yet he can actually blow his dupe frog i think he's gonna blow his dupe frog up with the metaphos cards to search swap frog because i was thinking he already had swap frog but not yet so he gets the fusion and then he gets swap frog so yeah this is not only a cleave fort metaphos build but he's actually running frogs in here so that he can summon tree toad as well it's actually pretty interesting but they both take damage though because like i said volcanic counter is it's like it's one of those weird cards that like 
it, it's extremely hard to play around. That's the great thing about Volcanics is since they all sit in your graveyard and they can activate whenever, they're extremely difficult to play around because I guess you can make like a Abyss Dweller, but not every deck can make that. Or, I mean, who the fuck really runs like DD Crow anymore? So graveyard effects are still super hard to stop. I mean, I guess you could Solomon, but a lot of times if you see, like, you're going to take that much damage, you're going to take damage either way. So it's like, you might as well just save your Solomon. So he ends up getting his uh, Volcanic Shell. He goes into Tree Toad, and this is kind of like, this is cool because it's a little bit of a standoff here. When you have Tree Toad on one side of the board, and then you have Cyber Dragon Infinity on one side of the board, it's pretty skillful because obviously, you know, like Cyber Dragon Infinity doesn't want to activate his effect because Tree Toad could potentially counter that, and maybe he'd try and counter that. So, like, it, it, you don't want to be the first player to try and use your negation because your opponent has a card that can negate too, and you could end up being boned by that. You have to reach Jar of Avarice, which is obviously pretty good in this deck. Just send everything back, draw a card. Then he changed Chain Strike and Accumulate a Fortune. <laughs> so he's gonna draw two uh keep in mind he can't activate cyber infinity because if he does obviously treat to will negate that shit so he then puts uh i think he activated reload as well the the, the counters are going to be pretty nuts but he he what's it called mm, i gotta pod gotta slow this down he summons the Swap Frog, and then he drops, I believe he dropped Ronin Totem in the graveyard. So now what's kind of crazy is Metaphos actually have the potential to summon their own Tree Toad uh, now too. So you'd be, you'd basically be looking at a field of Cyber, Cyber Dragon Infinity plus Tree Toad plus uh, Mithril, like I, plus uh, Metaphos Full Metal Alkahis. Like that's an incredibly strong field. I don't really know how you get over that outside of like, I guess the Winged Dragon of Ra. And that's what he's going for. Now, if you look at this field, it's fucking nuts. So, you know. No, he's gonna attack he's going to attack he's almost dead he actually leaves him with uh just a little bit of life points tree toad summons poison draw frog he goes for volcanic rocket but full metal alkahist is like mm, no can't do that he does end up chaining uh blaze Excel reload and he pitches the what's it called he pitches the scatter shot but obviously he's just gonna negate with cyber dragon infinity but to quote every Yu-Gi-Oh show ever you still take the damage <laughs> I love that line in uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! RV. But you still take the damage. So even though he doesn't have any monsters on field, he's actually got him to 1,500 life points. Watch what happens here, right? So he tries to activate one Metaphos card to obviously pop a card on his field. And then a chain is played. And then a chain from the graveyard. And then another card on the field is chain. And then Cyber Dragon Infinity. And then Tree Toad. And then fucking... Chain Strike is Chain Link 8, which does, what, 3,200 Like, look at this fucking chain and the way that this shit played out. And this is why Chain Strike is actually low-key busted in this deck, because if you get your opponent to add Chain Links, your cards in the graveyard are going to stack up as well. So you see, he tried to use both of his negates. Well, or originally, he tried to use his, uh, meta <clears throat> his Metaphos Pendulum card. Then there was a chain for the MST effect. And then, you know, he used a card from the graveyard because the Metaphos, they all add chain links. And then he chained onto that, the Karma Cut. And then Cyber Dragon Infinity was like, fuck, I don't want to get banished, so I think I'll just banish that. And then uh, Accumatilla Fortune was activated. And then he was like, well, I don't want you to draw more cards, so I'll just treat to that. And then he came over the top with a chain strike, which is going to deal just massive damage. It's, it's ridiculous. 30 and 200 damage. I've never seen in my entire life of playing Yu-Gi-Oh!, I have never seen a chain link eight, ne like never once. So I thought that that was freaking incredible because I thought it was almost certain that he was gonna lose just because of the field that he has. Like he has he has Alkahis, he has Cyber Infinity, and he has Streeto. But I mean, this is why you play. This is why you mix in some burn cards when you're playing Volcanics because Volcanic Counter and Scatter Shot already do a natural level of burn. So it only makes sense to throw in a couple of uh, chain strikes and see what you can do. So. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Kind of crazy ending there. Not really predictable, I don't think. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't. Thumbs up the video if you enjoyed it.